Good afternoon, and thank you for joining Andy Marsh, Chief Constable, and me, Sue Matt Stevens, Police and Crime Commissioner for Avon and Somerset, in these very challenging times. And it's really important that you that we listen to what you want, what you want to hear from the Chief Constable. So today we're going to we've got a, a series of questions that you've you've you've, you've let us uh, you've let us receive. But I think, first of all, let me say that I want to thank your officers um, and staff because I know they're working their socks off. I know that they're working really hard at a very difficult time, and you know that you have my full support. So let's first of all start off. You know, how, what can you tell us about how you've been planning and responding to those plans? So this uh, is, a, is a pandemic, a global pandemic, and ever since I became a, a chief officer, right back in 2006, through our local resilience forum planning, we've planned for how we, the police, would respond with other agencies to a, a, a pandemic, mm -hmm. flu epidemic like this. <laughs> and so um, we have a local resilience forum that is meeting on a daily basis at strategic and tactical level. We have changed what we do um, and the way that we do it. So we, we have cleared as much of our workload as possible that's non-essential We've had some time to do that, we've had about 10 days to do that, so that the officers, PCSOs and staff are ready to deal with whatever happens next. Some of that we can predict and some of that is unknown. But what I can say is that we've got hundreds of police officers and PCSOs out there today communicating with the public and explaining to them what we're doing to respond to this and telling the public how they can help us to help themselves to cut deaths by complying with this government advice. Thank you for that. Uh, that gives us the general picture. Now, I've also been asked a few specific questions that you just mean you know, if, if you could um, just help us if you can. So, we, you know, we, we heard the Prime Minister yesterday, um, and he was very clear that we need to stay at home and we need to stay safe in order to protect our NHS. But there have been a few questions. So, let me ask you how are the, the police going to enforce the one exercise per day? Yeah. So. I think the really important thing is that the community, the public, understand the why. Mm. And the why is that people are being asked to stay at home to save lives, to save overwhelming the NHS. Now, we're, we're here to help them. We're here to, to support that guidance. So the, the guidance has come out, and some of the exemptions include essential work, mm -hmm. caring for vulnerable people, and one exercise uh, episode per day. Now, now, clearly, that is very, very difficult to enforce over a huge population. But what we have every reason to believe, every hope and expectation, is that people will understand the why is this uh, guidance, this law, important, and the vast majority will comply with it. Mm. Uh, we hope that the vast majority will also bring their pressures of um, uh, persuasion uh, to bear on their families and friends and neighbours in, in a sensible way. Mm. Now, if we see people uh, flagrantly um, openly disobeying uh, the law that is being passed now. It won't be, won't be finalised until Wednesday will pass for Royal Assent, Thursday will be on the statutes book. We will take enforcement action, but we hope and expect the vast number of the population to comply with this. I think it's one of those things that we often get people um, you know, phoning us up and saying, what can we do? Well, actually, what they, they can do, everyone has a part to play right now, is to stay at home. It, it is, and I think uh, when this uh, legislation was written, the spirit of it was that people, either in uh, units of their family, people they live with, so they're not spreading the virus outside of that unit, or on their own, um, go for a walk, go for a run, or cycle a bike. Mm -hmm. now, we, we've heard some bizarre things about can we go windsurfing. Mm -hmm. well, what we know is that unnecessary travel is meant to be avoided. Mm -hmm. So most people to go windsurfing have to put something on their roof and drive somewhere. So that is not one routine element of exercise per day. That, mm. that would be someone trying to bend the rules either to be clever or for their own um, effect. Actually, this is really serious. And the reason that we're doing this is to save the NHS, to save lives. It's really important. I suppose the, the message is try not to bend the rules. The rules are there and they're very clear and we shouldn't be trying to find different ways of trying to get around them. Uh, it, this is not a time to do that yet. Mm. We, 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 want, we want people to understand uh, the, the purpose of these rules and to interpret them using common sense and sound judgment. Okay. So we have a very large area at Navin and Somerset. We have many rural towns and, and, and villages. So, you know, how will you enforce these new rules? Well, this is all over the media. 
Um, so I think the communicating what the rules are and communicating the why is the, is a significant thing. And this mm. is why I'm grateful for the chance to talk to you about it today, Sue. We, we, we will have an additional degree of visibility because of the way in which we've approached our ongoing workload and our new workload. Our priority is to protect the vulnerable, save life. But this does mean, because of the position the force is in, that we're in a position to put more people out in the community, mm -hmm. on foot, on bikes and in cars. So if, pe if people are flagrantly disobeying these rules, then they, they should expect a reasonable challenge from a police officer. One of the questions talking about vulnerability is that we, we're, we're concerned about the, the number of homeless that we have, <coughs> have out on our streets. And we have amazing charities and groups that are really trying to, to look after them. But how are the police going to work with local authorities on this? So right at the strategic level, we've got one local resilience forum for the whole of Avon and Somerset Police Area. Now, although this is a health emergency, ACC Nikki Watson is chairing that local resilience forum. And the, the first priority of, of that forum is to bring the agencies together to respond to crisis. And they will look at everything from getting food to vulnerable people, um, getting essential medical support to the people who need it, right, right through to issues such as homelessness. Now, working to that local resilience forum, are local authorities that have got specific responsibilities around the homeless. Now, the police will play our part in obviously supporting them, but it is very important that each agency plays their role around the core business at the moment. And the, the, the main purpose of what we're trying to do is reduce the spread of the virus and reduce the demand, which is on the NHS. So we are working with local authorities um, to support the homeless community. And that local resilience forum is all about partnership working, isn't it? Because none of us are going to be able to solve this by ourselves. We actually have to do it with all our agencies and with the, our members of the public. This is um, an unprecedented global national health emergency and we need, to, we need to work together. I hope if we see anything, um, we hope not to see an outbreak of the virus any more than it, it, that can be avoided. Um, we hope to see an outbreak of, of, of kindness um, and support for each other and partnership working would be a good thing as well. Thank you. Um, one of the things that uh, has concerned, has concerned um, some members of the public is that some families are bigger than two. So if they were to go out and, and go out together or uh, if they live in the same household with a larger number of people, you know, how, how would the, the police deal with that? So the, the, the idea of these um, containment and isolation advice, which we've heard from the Prime Minister last night, is to contain the virus spread uh, so that it doesn't move beyond households. Um, so all of the non-essential travel and um, socialisation that has stopped. We, we expect to see some groups of greater than two, or the guidance is you shouldn't have a public gathering of more than two unless you're in the same family group. Mm -hmm. So I've, I've driven here today. Um, I haven't seen any groups, uh, large groups, in a police car, perfectly prepared to stop and talk to people. And what we would be saying is, are you all in the same family? Um, what are you doing? Um, could you go home? Uh, to make sure that people understand what the purpose of this is and we give them some very sensible advice and persuasion. So people can go out in bigger groups too but there's a reasonable chance that someone might say what you're doing. Okay I understand that and I suppose the other thing is isn't it that um, these rules are for all of us mm. and it doesn't just happen to somebody else out there it happens to it's, it's affecting all, all of us. So what about traveling um, between homes and villages you know what what is non-essential travel? So, so uh, essential travel is to go and buy some food um, we, we, we would urge and encourage people to do that as infrequently as possible. Mm -hmm. And if you can go on your own, you should go on your own. If you're on your own with children, you have to take them, we understand. So infrequently, low numbers, and do expect shops and outlets uh, for food to manage the number of people in those shops. And if you're queuing, keep a safe di distance. Mm -hmm. The same guidance um, applies to uh, medicine, if people need to go, go and get medicine. The only other occasions people are allowed out of their house is for their one, one period of exercise a day and, and the idea with that is that you're not driving to it. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that, that w what I have in my mind is walking, um, running or cycling. The, the other reason for travel is to support vulnerable people. So there, there may be an exception whereby you need to go and offer some support to a vulnerable relative that lives in a, 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 a community some distance from yours. There might be a very good reason why you need to do that. But I know that there are local support groups being set up across the whole mm. country, in big communities, in little communities, the local resilience forum, the neighbourhood police are all tapping into these um, groups that are supporting vulnerable people. So if you're worried about um, an elderly relative, let's say, um, 
if you go on the, on the local Facebook for their, their village, their um, neighborhood, their part of the city, almost certainly you will find some people who are prepared to help that individual. Mm -hmm. so, so there should be a minimum requirement to travel significant distances. Oh, thank you for that, Andy. That, that's given, I think, a lot of clarity to, to, to what we heard yesterday. And there, they are stringent measures that came out from the Prime Minister, but we have an absolutely vital role to lessen the impact of, of this virus. And I think, you know, these, these are tough times for all of us, and we must be compassionate, and we must be kind, and we must try, and we, and because we will get through this, but we will only get through this together if we all work and support each other. So we're going to try to do this regularly with um, me asking the questions that you want answered by the Chief Constable. So if you want to send in your questions either through Twitter or Facebook or email, email us direct on pcc at avonandsomerset.police.uk then we can you know, listen to what you want and make sure that we can give you some answers. I think that uh, we need all to look after each other. We all need to stay, stay safe um, because this is going to be a very challenging times for all of us. And I would urge everyone to just be a little kinder to everyone. Thank you.